My name is Jana Burton. I am affectionately known as Professora Amazonas of Grupo Libidade de Capoeira as a Capoeira martial arts teacher and African dance instructor and West African drumming instructor as well. All right, it's great. Lots of fun. <laughs> yeah. So um, I'm going to talk to you mostly about capoeira today, sure. ask you about capoeira, and you sure. can talk to me about it. Um, I, I know that there's a lot of history. Um, can you give just a brief explanation for people who don't know what capoeira is, what it is? Okay. Capoeira is uh, a martial art disguised as a dance that was created by Africans that were enslaved and when they brought the culture over to Brazil, not they wanted to go to Brazil necessarily because the slave trade was brought there. Uh, they fought for freedom using capoeira, but disguised as a dance in the slave plantations and hid away to the quilombos, um, which where the slaves would escape to, to find their freedom. They had a secret society there and they were practicing it stronger and so forth and go and begin their slave revolt. And they went back to the plantations to go get their people and it spread throughout now internationally after they finished slavery is over, of course. Um, but now it's a sport, the national sport of Brazil. But it's practiced internationally in many, many countries by practitioners and lovers of sport and also of fight. Okay. Um, how long have you been practicing capoeira? About 19 years now. Okay. And what is it that drew you into practicing capoeira? <laughs> Ironically is that when I first stumbled upon capoeira in its live presentation, I knew about capoeira from movies, I knew about capoeira from video games, but did not know that there were classes that were nearby per se. So being in New Jersey, I found that there was a, a batizado, which is a graduation and belt promotion. And it's an initiation ceremony for beginner chords. And I stumbled upon this event I was working at a college and they had an event in their gymnasium. I used my credentials to go through. I said, this can't be what I think it is. And I was walking through and I looked and I said, all the women are selling the t-shirts and the food and nobody's in the hall though. Why are they not playing? Why are they not doing the flips and everything else? And it just wasn't a, a female presence that was there. So I said, this has got to be hard. I must try it. So therefore I stumbled upon what they had a free class on a Monday. I said, I can do that. And then I never stopped. That's an interesting story. <laughs> That's why I laugh as, yeah. as we begin our conversation. Right. Say, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so you knew already. <laughs> yes. So it, 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 it was not hard for me to uh, consider nor think about um, gender equity and non-equity <laughs> issues, we'll say. Right. So when you first came to practice Gabwara 19 years ago, mm -hmm. Um, you started because of seeing that gender imbalance. Mm -hmm. Has that changed? It has dramatically changed. It's dramatically, dramatically changed. Um, where now, it, in the, I'll say in the beginning, there were definitely more male practitioners. Women were in the capoeira environment as the mothers, the godmothers, and, and the madrinas of, of the event, and uh, would help to pray for and push the event there, but not necessarily practitioners on the floor. They've always been present throughout Capoeira history, however, not necessarily celebrated either. Um, there are issues that, or not issues, life concerns, we'll say, that occur in women's lives that did not allow them to continue. Maybe it's pregnancy, maybe it's getting married, maybe it's moving to another country because you have to search for a better life as well. And it looks different for females sometimes than it does for males. So that definitely has changed where now we have no, more of a supportive community where it's not just four girls and you know, it's not just four guys. They do have things that are events that are uh, for women. I've been to women encounters, which have been actually kind of weird for me because again, I didn't grow up that way. And I didn't even realize that there wasn't a female in front per se uh, leading the way. So to be in a room full of other women and there's maybe one man I have not been in a place where there's only women, but it's been a man. Why? Because there's always a male mastery, normally, of the group who's organizing. So it has its, its pros and cons, but it's definitely a, a larger female presence um, in Capoeira in general. Okay. I'm going to get back to that in a little, in a little while. Sure. Um, I want to ask just some more practical questions about um, the, the 
the music of capoeira, the movements. Um, can you explain a little bit about the different instruments that are used in capoeira? Yes. So, there is the birimba. The birimba is the master of the hall, the, the master, which then gives the rules of the game. Uh, and the game would be uh, depending upon the talk or the rhythm that is chosen. So, for example, uh, in the big, most of all the classes, I ask the students what rhythm do they hear to make sure they are detecting what are the rules of the game so they can then express themselves through capoeira into, through the rules. Um, there's many ways to win a fight. There's many ways to win a game, but are you playing by the right rules? So that's where the question comes in. Pandero and the Agogo, Heko Heko, and Atabaki are accompanying instruments that will then help to disguise the music as just a dance. So you can see there's a healthy play between the music of capoeira, music of condomble, music of maculele. These are all some of the same instruments that are then put together, but then for different ceremonies or different time periods. So hence you may have a reason to change immediately to samba and not the bateria changes, but because we have a necessity to disguise this as a dance. Whereas you may need to change it where we're going to maculele and some instruments do drop out because you're looking for a different um, energy that's there, which then relates closer to what is uh, then in condomble. Condomble is the Brazilian expression of Ifa, which is Yoruba, which is they call it in America, in the United States of America. So there's many different expressions through the music. It is your conduit, it is your elevator, it is also suppresses other things that we're not supposed to have. In terms of bad energy, it is a driving force, it's a protector as well. So the, so the birimbao, the rhythms that are played and what the birimbao is playing is what defines the rules of the game? Yes. I did not know that. Okay, so for example, a slow game, low to the ground, very tricky, what might be called or considered an Angola game. So the birimbao will sound ch ch dong ding ch ch dong ding dong ding dong ding dong ding ch ch dong ding so you hear this is Angola so with all the variations it still goes back to there's the basics of it whereas we have a game where it says I'm not allowed to touch you I'm in another realm and I'm in another rule set it's called Bengala so again, I can show all the fancy moves, but I cannot touch you. I will have my hasteras, my sweeps, I will have all my takes down, I will show, I will show the demonstration of it. Another higher level of that game would be Yuna. You have flips in here. You have, I'm looking for the prettiest movement that you can have to escape from this move. And I will wait. I will have my foot right there. Not touching you, not touching you, not touching you. To let you have that magical moment to come out. It's a game that's also used to, uh, by masters uh, for to show their expertise as well. And it's something that we also play for fallen capoeiristas. Unfortunately, I had a student who passed away and we play Yuna for him at his funeral. It's a song, it's a Birnbao song with no singing. It's just the movement and the communication is there. It's no singing is going on. So again, you have to, if you don't know the rules of the what the Birnbao is telling you to do, uh, or, or understand that the honor it's giving you. So I had the, a, a wonderful experience to play it for him, you know, but also I understood what was going on. I was, had the pleasure of spreading that knowledge to the people who went to celebrate his life because he loved Capoeira. So I was able to explain, this rhythm is our rhythm back to him to say thank you and to tell him to keep playing in the sky. Great, thank you. Um... How long have you been um, teaching capoeira? This is 2019. I have been teaching about 10 years as well, um, with a title, I'll say that. I have subbed for classes uh, many a times, and that's being a graduate student, um, because I've had other martial arts training. So the transition to teach a class was not hard. 
Um, but the content information to really answer some of the harder questions uh, definitely took time took time to develop. But I've had been in charge of my own group per se, you know, and that has been for eight years. So you have your own group? Yes. Uh, my teacher, Capoeira, uh, my Capoeira teacher is Mestre Cigano. He came to the United States in the 1980s and he built the first academy in the United States, in New Jersey, um, down on Bruin Street, which we call uh, Little Iron Brown, Little, Little Brazil. Through the troubles of just the economics, we lost the academy and he had to move back to Brazil. His mom uh, was having health issues, family was growing in other ways, and he had to make some adjustments. The group was then left under my instruction with another teacher who has also relocated down to Virginia since then. Um, his name is Makako, Coach Rich Makako. And so he's there, but he does, does come to support. We have our, our graduation events every May. So it's a family reunion we call. So Makako comes up, we have other practitioners from our group that come from abroad as well. And the local family is definitely all there to receive them. We have a family reunion and a big party. Is there um, a strong following community of Capoeira in New Jersey? Yes. There are one, two, three, four, five groups, six groups in New Jersey. Um, we all have our separate homes or rented homes or any way that you want to look at that. Uh, we'll just call them academies. Um, separate groups, not even the same um, logos. So there's a one large Capoeira family, uh, a community, but we all have our separate ways of, of finding our ashe, finding our energy, finding our purpose, finding our, our way of delivery of building community. And there are six groups that are in New Jersey, but they're great groups separately. Sometimes we do support each other, not just for graduations, but because they have a guest teacher, or a birthday party, I'll grab my students and say, guys, let's go visit this person, this group, and we go have a good time. My group does that. Every other, everyone else's group doesn't necessarily do that. But we, again, are Grupo Libertadji, which means liberty, and we'll go everywhere. <laughs> what are some of the things that have changed in Capoeira in transitioning from a cultural practice that was specific to one part of the world, one country, one area, mm -hmm. and is now practiced worldwide? What I find that is something that is, has changed in the thinking of some of the teachers or the masters, a lot of the old masters are old men. It's just the way of the times. Who has been in the longest, practicing longest? They're older men. But they have also had the opportunity to grow, to see some of the things that they've done to the community which are damaging, and have an opportunity to right their wrongs. Some of them are old enough and mature enough to call each other out and make better there. Something that I've also seen that is culturally a little bit uh, different than it was when I was started. If you didn't speak Portuguese, you just were lost in conversation. And you would smile like, okay, I think I know what's going on. But now, at the time, masters are, were trying to learn other languages. So I was in, in Senegal, in Africa, teaching a class. And there were people who spoke English, so I spoke English to them. There's people who folks spoke French, I spoke French to them. There were people who spoke Portuguese, I spoke Portuguese to them. There are times before, people would not do that. They would say, you want to learn Capoeira, you must learn Portuguese, and that's it. And that's it. There are advantages to understand the nuances of songs and culture, what's going on, but it's not the only way. Everyone is not necessarily a linguistic person. Some people come to Capoeira for many things. I love the way my master puts it. He says, some people come to Capoeira uh, for to you know lose weight. Some people come to Capoeira because they see this this girl that they like. Some people want to move like that guy over there. But we all say because we love it. The music is jamming, but we love it. I think I almost got kissing my head, but we love it when we come back. <laughs> yes. Are there differences in the way that it is practiced and expressed in Brazil as opposed to the nope. diaspora? Nope, not at all. It's just Capoeira. There's people who can jing in every country. <laughs> and what I find that is so lovely to me, I mean, Brazilians definitely will call Capoeira, this is my own, my own, and it's my cultural dance, my cultural, you know, fight, 
and they even at one point in time Capoeira was called a luta regional, which is the regional fight of Bahia. It's just we're gonna call it cold. This is a great name. So the ownership of it definitely was taken to heart. I love it when I have some children, I have little Brazilian children, and their parents come and they're learning the songs because they don't know it either. You, unless you take classes, you don't know it. So you can't say, oh, this is mine. You don't know it. You don't, you don't know it. You don't know it. Grandparents come in. Oh, it did look like the little kids in the street. Yes, this capoeira is capoeira. We're all on our learning curve. And so we learn to express it and receive it the more that we do it. It's like practicing a language. If you don't try, you will stuck on, you'll be stuck on the words of A, B, C, and my name. Hello, my name is, where is the bathroom? If that's all you want to learn to say, okay, those are important. But you will be conversing in a language. So the movements are like a language. Yes. All right. Yes. Um, can you talk a little bit about the, the, the hierarchy that is involved in the practice of capoeira? Sure. It is something like the, the Asian martial arts as well, in terms of um, their belt systems. Every group does not have a belt system. If I could polarize and make a hard cut in what is capoeira, some people will say Angola and some people will say Hezhanao. Hezhanao or regional, as it reads in English. Um, people wear cords, such as this. <laughs> okay. Um, some are braided like this for teacher's cords. Um, some are ropes. Actually, I can show my... Um, my system here a little bit later, but the systems are providing ranking. Um, colors are generally we follow the Brazilian flag colors: green, green yellows, yellows, yellow blues, varying colors of them as you uh, bring up your your mastery of the the art. Graduated students are generally about six chords in, um, and Teachers are about seven or eight chords are in. So this is what titles. The, of course, because Capoeira is meant to, the names of these things are meant to confuse other people. So the way that we call them in my group may not be the same that they call them in another group. So we have professors and contramasters and masters, which mean professor, contramasters, contra -masters, meaning the flags on a, on a sailboat. They have the big mastery flag and you have the contramaster, which helps it to fly. So this is the balance. You don't have those in Asian martial arts. You just, your professor after you have your black belt and your, your get dance and your stripes and that's that. So our system is similar, but we just have different names. I want to get back to the idea of gender. Yes. Um, within capoeira. And so you spoke about when, you spoke about the, the involvement of women in capoeira and the practice, the play of capoeira and so you said you've seen that changed over the years um what impact does gender have within the hierarchy of capoeira in the different titles and roles it's interesting because as i said i'm a bit dodgy i've traveled to just about anybody and everybody's event that i can get to you know of course within reason there's things that i shouldn't go to because it's not built upon a system and it's just someone who says I'm a teacher and I'm not going to support that because you can't just it's just it ruins the art and there are people out there and I, I know uh, who those scumbags you know whatever you know suckers of the art are, are, are so I don't support those but I'm often the only female teacher at events and then this is events with 50 plus people so I went to an event two weeks ago and I was great. I was one of three female teachers. However, I'm the only one with my own academy. I'm the fifth African American, African in America at this level, female. So it's still on the brink of newness. Um, depending upon how those things go in the next few years, I know some, and again, the other people that none of them have their own academy. I know one person, uh, she's in California, one of the, the four people who have reached this rank prior to me, uh, she has her own you know, space she rents out, 
she doesn't have a, a, as large of a program and she hasn't been teaching on her own as long. Fortunately, her mastery is still in California. So she can just go home. <laughs> you know, so it's, it's a different kind of market. But I was kind of forced out to, not in a bad way, but I was forced to, to, to lead. I was forced to take a stand. Either my family falls apart or we get ready. And either I ask for help where I need help or we fall apart. Because again, I cannot do everything either. And I think that's one of the differences also between not to say male leadership and female leadership because I have no problem saying I need help or this is something that I'm working on also. That's just a part of just humility. I think that it's easier for people to receive from me because I am a female. Um, sometimes if you hear guys say, oh, well, I don't have this yet. And what do you mean? But you're the teacher. You're the... Everybody has the opportunity to grow. So I think it's just received differently, honestly, because I'm a female. Have you faced any challenges because of that? Absolutely. I hmm. teach, I've taught in 13 other countries. I know someone who has a group in a country he's never been to. How is that? He has a title and he's a man. I've been to that country before. I've taught classes there. You're gonna tell me I'm not good at what I do? I'm not saying that. But at the same token, you choose somebody you've never met before. That could be a scumbag. We make videos, we do you know, things on the internet. You can make yourself look like anything. I'm not saying that he's not a great person. I support the other teacher also. We are friends, we travel. We've traveled to some of these countries together. But he's never been to Africa. He's never been to there. He's never been to the, see these people. But we have a conversation of a video and I'll be your master. Send me something. I'll send you a video. Send me something. And it becomes an exchange of money sometimes. Unfortunately. So, because I'm not, I'm not interested in exchanges of money and I'm in, interested in people growing, sometimes that's overlooked. And I get stepped on because of my niceness or my humility. But that's not going to change my journey. It's just my journey. And I've learned to just be okay with everyone else in their journey. I think my journey is phenomenal. I love what I do. I'm having fun and I feel that I'm loved at what I do. So this is great for me. I don't need to be spread thin where something else may not work. I don't have to force something because what works is working well. And I'm fed at the same time as I'm feeding you, feeding, feeding others. Great. Um... You mentioned being the first, or the fifth African American woman mm -hmm. that reached the the level that you are mm -hmm. at um, within the hierarchy of Capoeira, mm -hmm. and that you're the only one who has their own academy. How how ha it's a multi part question. How has the issue of race impacted the practice of Capoeira? Mm -hmm. We know that it came from mm -hmm. enslaved Africans. Mm -hmm. Uh, and now it's kind of practice. It is practice worldwide. So that the makeup has changed of what it is. But how has that continued to impact on the practice and the play and it, it, the difference between how that might impact in a place like Brazil and here in the, in New Jersey? That's interesting also because I have um, female practitioners that do come from Brazil to the United States to support what other their groups here. Um, excuse me, and because we're all friends, we see each other at events, and I'll allow them to come visit our group and exchange with our group and grow from there. The first time uh, I had some friends that come to visit, and they asked me, say, Amazonas, do you have male students? Because they had a, the only time we met at another place, and I had a female student with me. Do you have male students? So, yeah, so that big guy over there, that big guy over there, and they were astonished. And it didn't dawn on me, because I'm not in Brazil every day, about the sexism there as well. And again, I, I do have the conversations with my students. You are going to be tried harder because you have a female teacher. Someone is going to try to stick it to you a little differently to see if you're really training. 
And it may be something that's out of my realm that I'm not physically able to do something to you because I'm not big enough. But maybe your flexibility is not big enough so I can do something else. So we have these conversations, but we have also have the conversations someone else is going to try you in a way that they don't think you have been tried before. And in the back of their mind at some point, I believe it's because I'm a female. But nonetheless, I say again, do what you do and do what you do well. You don't have to be able to do everything. Just some people walk forward, some people walk backwards, but they get to where they have to go. Choose your own. Great. Um, and how has the, the um, I, experience of, of race and racism impacted on Capoeira in the practice of it? Um, I have not received, I have not witnessed, I'll say, racism. You know, it's known as a black sport, it's a black thing, you know. We have suffered culture difference because I was not born in Brazil. So people say, oh, oh, but she's African, okay. You know, so I watched those type of dynamics. Other people have faced those things. And I do find it very interesting more times than not, people come through the doors and they say, oh, what's that Brazilian? Do you walk in a Taekwondo school and ask where the person is from? No. You say, oh, you have what ranking? Okay, sure. Maybe you say, who's your teacher? Okay. And then you sign your person up, you sign your child or whatever. Only in Capoeira. <laughs> so that's interesting to me. So you've experienced more of an impact, less or less of an impact because of race and more because of nationality. Mm -hmm. But once they leave, right. they're like, oh, this is amazing. <laughs> oh, great. Because it's got water and you don't right. have to. I can, I can walk down the road and say, negro, 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 and then tell you all these great things. And then you'll miss the spirituality of it, what's going on. Because you're stuck on, on, a, on a pigmentation at this point. In the same way, I've also had to tell my African-American students born in the United States, when you have a Brazilian who comes in, even if they are fair-skinned, do not feel that they're not black. Because they might be more African than you realize because beyond the pigment, there are more Africans in Brazil than any other place in the world. So just how your pigment shows does not necessarily express what your heart and your mind does. Guarantee, yes, I am certainly, I know I am definitely approached differently than a person who is fair or skin. It's just a fact of the matter. And the politics that are behind that, inside and outside of Capoeira, are, are not different per se. When you see a person across the street, you make an assumption based upon their color sometimes, how much money they make, and so forth. All that stuff still happens in Capoeira, but you can't really concentrate on that when a foot is flying at your face. <laughs> State the obvious, but you know, it's, it's there. It's definitely there. You mentioned spirituality. Yes. And the spirit. And I, I, I'm wondering what is the connection to some of the spiritual traditions um, in Brazil? the Candomblé, Umbanda, is there any connection between Capoeira and those, those belief systems? The arrangement of the instruments. <laughs> How you have the drums, the set that we have is a traditional Angola set when we have three bidding bows, two panderos, agogo, heco, heco, atabaki, by the heartbeat. So just that way if you look at it. Um, the arrangements of how the instruments that are alike are together. It's the same thing that you see in a Candomblé house, or Umbanda house, or a Yoruba house, or a Ifa house. So, same religion, different country, different materials per se. Now the reason I mention that is because you have um, Makulele, Capoeira, three bidding bows, three drums, the same thing at Bata drums, you same small, medium, large, same thing. Again is do you see it? So I have practitioners and encounter practitioners that are not involved in uh, any of the earth religions, per se. And I've also met other masters who will say, don't sing any of those songs about Orisha. And, okay, well, no 
from. That's the, they are Christian or, or um, that's their, their, their choice of expression. There's many things to sing about. <laughs> I can talk about it someplace else. But that also means you still need to recognize if I'm calling for um, St. Michael in a song or St. Benedict or who is that really? They are syncretized to Orisha. Just want to tell you, you know, in case you didn't know, there's also, because that's how we hit it anyway. So you can say St. Michael, but in the back of my mind, I'm saying Shango. It is what it is. You know, so again, it's how do you want to have a conversation? If I approach a, a conversation with a person who is um, of Islam faith, Islamic faith, you may not say assalamu alaikum because that's not what you would normally do, but you would say, hey, peace. Because you understand that's what that means. Period. You may not greet a person that says, grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God. Because you may not be Christian, but you can say, hey. you understand when they say God bless you, you know, what it, you know what it means. It's the question is, do you want to see what they see in the intent? For lack of a vocabulary, you blame their heart that they're not intelligent enough to, not, to know another set of language that you can communicate with? Or do you read between the mind and get the sentiment and not stuck on the words? Great. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I think you, we, we got it. <laughs> we got it. Really appreciate your, the time that you spent. No so, problem. I you. love art. I love people who are trying to share our arts, you know, because it's not something that's mine, mine, mine. Again, if it was just mine, 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 I could have a hall all by myself. I play the instruments, I play the game. <laughs> it's impossible. So again, I appreciate the opportunities that we get to share trueness from our heart. And also I understand, you know, it's through our experiences, but if we don't tell our own stories, then who will? Because some people don't know that my story even exists. So thanks for listening. <laughs>